It's so wonderful to sit with a mother and a daughter, two precious people on the tour, as well as a few others. We're on the Sea of Galilee. What thoughts come to your mind when you think of the Sea of Galilee? I think you think of Jesus. He spent many hours on this body of water. I recall one incident. The disciples had a quarrel. They wanted to crown him as king, but he didn't come to rule over people, except ruling over the hearts of people. So he sent them across to the other side. He went up to the mountain to pray. He came to, to be a king of shame, king of guilt, king of salvation, but not a little king. And while they were on the lake, there was a terrible storm, and the ship was going to sink. Now, Jesus knows when you are sinking, and he'll always be in time. So he came to the boat, and they thought it was a ghost. Sometimes we think Jesus is an enemy. But then he said to them, it's me. And of course, Peter, without thinking, he said, Lord, can I come and walk on the water to you? And he did. I said, come. He was a little distance from the ship when he looked around to, to his fellows just to show how smart he was. And he took his eyes off Christ. He drowned. Jesus loves saving drowning people. And he helped Peter out of the water. On another occasion, there was a terrible storm again. The boat was sinking. They forgot about Christ. And I think as the lightning shone, they saw Jesus sleeping on the boat. They woke him up. Master, we are perishing. What are you doing about it? So he got up, lifted his hands up to the sky. And always peace again. You're on a boat. Maybe you're sinking. Remember the story of Jesus. He loves to help sinking boats, sinking people. And if you've got a storm in your heart right now, he wants to say to you, peace, be still. Accept this peace. He is the prince of peace. An archaeologist by the name of Wooly was digging at Ur of the Chaldees, discovered the city which is mentioned in the Bible. But while they discovered there, they read about a place called Ebla, and they started to search for Ebla, and they found Ebla in Syria. There they discovered 10,000 tablets and 500 places mention another city, Mari. So they searched for Mari and they found Mari. At Mari, they read about at Katna, another city. Search for it, they found it. So all these ancient cities are related. And here we're standing at Bet Shemesh. Bet means the house, no sorry, Bet Sian the house of Sian. Shemesh in Hebrew is sun, in Aramaic it is Shamash. You see the sun symbol all over the Middle East. Uh, but my research about uh, Bet Sian goes back to Tutmosis III. He was a contemporary of Moses. He took over from Hatshepsut, Deir al-Bari in Egypt during the 18th dynasty. And after Moses fled to, the, uh, to Sinai or Midian, this great pharaoh called the Napoleon of Egyptian history uh, just about conquered the entire Lefant, the Middle East. And when you read his annals, he speaks about Betsian, this city. We're going back 1450 roundabout. 
Uh, the story I like about Beth Sion is the story of Saul. It's a very sad story. Mount Gilboa is just behind us. Three days before he died, he went to the Witch of Endor. The Witch of Endor said to him, tomorrow you'll be dead. Well, it took three days. She was a little out with her dates. When uh, the Philistines met at Afek, and David who was amongst them, then the Philistines came here, and on Mount Malgoa, the Israelites fought the Philistines. Now the Lord said to Saul, you must exterminate the Amalekites. He's given them centuries of grace, but the time has come for this cruel uh, civilization to be eliminated. You know what? Saul thought that he could handle his enemies. God said, kill them. Saul says, well, let them live. And on Mount Gilboa, Gilboa, an Amalite killed King Saul. He took the crown of Saul to Ziklach and he said, listen, my Lord David, this is what I brought. Your enemy is dead. He has the crown. I killed him myself. And then David killed that man. Uh, the story is, the lesson is, if the Lord says, kill the Amalek in your life, whatever that sin may be, kill it. Otherwise, that sin will kill you. Well, it was a sad day for people living in this area to hear about the death of Saul. They brought him down to this very place, the Philistines, him, Saul, and his three sons, and they placed them on the wall. Some translation says they nailed him to the wall. How sad. Can you see the corpse of Saul, that huge man? Somewhere against the wall, decapitated. The people from Jabez Gilead, just over here, said we must give him an honorable burial. So they came at night, they took the bodies from the temple walls, they burned the bodies and gave them a decent burial uh, service at Jabez Gilead. So this is the story of Beth Sion. I relate it to the sad story of Saul. Saul never said, I'm sorry. He had about 10 sins. David had about 20,000 sins. Every time the prophet reprimanded David, he said, I'm sorry, I'm the man. And he made things right with God. But Saul never said sorry. You've got a choice to say, I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry, my sweetheart. I'm sorry, my son, my father, whoever. And you will live. Saul couldn't say, I'm sorry. He's a lost man. His last few days were very sad days. May the Lord give us the grace to say, I'm sorry. We're right on top of Betsian, Tal Betsian. Over there is the mountains of Gilead, the Jordan Valley, the Araba. Behind us, Mount Bogoa, Gilboa, where Jonathan his two, two brothers and his father died. Now something very interesting. After Solomon died, his son Rehabim ruled. But he made a mess of things. And the Lord punished him. He sent Shishak from Egypt. And Shishak came and he conquered many of the cities. And then he went to Jerusalem and he took all the golden shields of Solomon and went back to Egypt. Now, when you visit the Karnak temple in Luxor, you can see the picture of Amun, the main god in the pantheon of Egyptian gods, as well as the account of Pharaoh Shisak. He mentioned there that he conquered 46 cities. One of them is Betsian.
And just over there, you can see the destruction caused by Shishak, just as the Bible tells us. I want to tell you, the Bible is a reliable book, even if it tells you that though your sins be as scarlet, it shall be white as snow, red like crimson, it will be pure as wool. Believe what the Bible says. Read this book. Exposure changes you. By beholding, you become changed. We are walking on history, confirming the authenticity of the scripture. There are three pillars. One in Greece, where Alexander the Great was born. Then a more important one near Pofadr, next to the Orange River, another pillar. But this is the most important pillar. I'll tell you why. In Matthew 24, Jesus says, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, the abomination, the desolate, that's the Roman system, literal and figuratively. Then you must flee. Pray that your flight will not be on the Sabbath or in the winter. So in 66, Cestius Gallus, the general, Roman general, besieged Jerusalem, destroyed the outer wall, he went into the city, and all the zealots, the far-right people, fled into the temple complex. We saw the Wailing Wall, that was part of the temple complex. They fled in there. And then suddenly, for no reason whatsoever, this general decided he's going back to his base in Antioch, in Syria, uh, Turkey. So they fled. Remember Jesus says when you see Jerusalem surrounded by the armies, this is the time to flee. So what happened? The Romans fled and they were pursued by the Jewish zealots. And the Christians were free to flee. Remember their prayer? Lord, help us not to flee in winter, nor on the Sabbath. It was November. It was still warm, relatively speaking. And on a Wednesday, they came from Jerusalem and they fled and they came to Pella. It's also interesting that the documents tell us that for at least four centuries, some say six centuries, the Christians had a colony here and they worshipped on the Sabbath. In Roman Alexandria, some Christians worshipped on a Sunday, but here they kept the Sabbath as Jesus taught them. There are many fountains here and this is where they settled. So whenever you read Matthew 24, this is the result of prayer. God answered their prayers. And if you've got a problem, speak to the Lord. By the way, he tells us what to do. Believe him, obey him, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and to obey. Welcome at Pella and welcome to Matthew 24. We're standing at a place in Jordan, northern Jordan, called Umquais. This is the biblical Gadara. There's a beautiful story in scripture concerning the site. But let's look at the background. Jesus crossed the border from Israel to the heathen country of Tyre, Sidon. As the Jews regarded them, the dogs. So Jesus crosses borders from the sophisticated to the dogs. If you, if you feel like a dog, Jesus doesn't regard you as a dog. So he healed this woman, this heathen woman's uh, sick child. And then he walked all the way back to the Sea of Galilee, got into a boat with his 12 disciples. They met up with a terrible storm. They almost drowned. 
But Christ lifted up his hands and rebuked the storm. He showed to the people that he is the master of the elements. Early in the morning when the sun rose, they came ashore on this side of the lake. This is the heathen side. And as they walked onto the land, a man from this side, Gadara, he lived amongst the tombs, and we saw some tombs here. He had no clothes on him, and he charged towards Jesus to kill him because he was filled with devils. All the disciples fled, but Christ stood there. He never ran away from somebody with needs. And then he healed this man. Let's call him Alex. He healed him instantly. And the Bible says he clothed him. So Jesus must have bought clothes at Capernaum or Tiberias to clothe this man. And this is what he does with sinners. We come with him in our nakedness, in our madness. He heals us and clothes us with his righteousness. This is the wonderful story of Gadara. And this man wanted to follow Jesus, but Jesus said, stay here. And this man went to the Decapolis, the ten cities, and told about the miracle that happened in his life. And when Jesus came back here, he gathered all the people and they listened to Jesus. And of course, here we have the second multiplication of bread and fish. Christ comes to the side of the heathen, the outcast, and the Son of Righteousness and Grace and Kindness shines on good and bad. So if you feel very bad, if you feel you're a great sinner, Christ specializes in sinners like you and me. Nothing in us, everything is in Him. Take heart, my friend. We serve a wonderful Savior. God bless. Thank you.